While watching Star Wars you may have wondered how realistic any of the vehicles shown on screen are. In the current issue we will discuss the realism of LAAT, the main gunship of the Grand Army of the Republic. The Clone Army, one of the symbols of the power of the Galactic Republic and the period of the Clone Wars. Let's consider the fundamental possibility of LAAT in our universe according to the laws of physics, as well as the possibility of implementing this technology directly by modern earthly civilization. The performance characteristics of the gunship are described in detail in another video on the channel. In order not to repeat ourselves, let's immediately move on to the topic of realism. To start, let's discuss the fundamental design of the LAAT gunship. In the Star Wars universe, the LAAT is a versatile, troop-carrying aircraft equipped with a range of heavy weaponry, from laser turrets to missile launchers. It's also capable of vertical takeoff and landing VTOL, which makes it an ideal choice for transporting troops in and out of combat zones. Now from a physics standpoint, the concept of a VTOL aircraft is certainly possible in our universe. We have helicopters tilt rotor aircraft like the V-22 Osprey, and vertical takeoff and landing jets like the Harrier. All of these vehicles leverage various principles of aerodynamics and engineering to achieve the ability to hover and take off vertically. LAAT also has jet engines, but since they are not much different from modern ones, we will not pay much attention to them. I'll just say that LAAT jet engines are quite real even for modern human civilization. First, Let's break down the principles of operation of the repulsors on the LAAT gunship. In the Star Wars universe, repulsor lift technology is at the heart of the LOTS operation. These repulsors create a localized anti-gravitational field that counteracts the force of gravity, allowing the gunship to hover and maneuver in a precise and stable manner. Repulsor lifts provide the LAAT with remarkable agility and versatility. They can lift, lower, and pivot the vehicle in any direction, offering the pilot fine-grained control over its movement. Repulsor lifts on the LAAT are synchronized to ensure smooth and coordinated movement. This technology allows the gunship to hover steadily, even in turbulent conditions. Now, let's compare these principles with real-world examples of propulsion systems. Real-world helicopters use rotating blades to generate lift, which enables them to hover and maneuver vertically. While helicopters are impressive in their own right, their operation is fundamentally different from the repulsor lift technology of the LAAT. Helicopter rotors rely on aerodynamics and require physical contact with the air to create lift. VTOL aircraft like the Harrier or the more modern F-35B use jet thrust and vectoring nozzles to achieve vertical takeoff and landing. These aircraft can transition between vertical and horizontal flight, but they don't create an anti-gravitational field like repulsor lifts. Some experimental vehicles use duct fan systems to achieve hovering and VTOL capabilities. These systems employ a combination of powerful fans and thrust vectoring for control. However, they still rely on aerodynamic principles and airflow to maintain lift and control. But what about repulsors? Repulsors in Star Wars work on the principle of ionizing the surrounding external environment, in our case air, and giving particles an impulse, as if pushing them away from themselves, and according to Newton's third law, the tank itself will also begin to push away from the ionized air, receiving a lifting force that keeps the machine above the ground. And the most interesting thing is that this technology is already available to humanity. Please, Silent Ventus Drone. It is based on the technology of ion propulsion, which is what repulsors use, as of October 2023. According to official statements from the company, the drone was able to fly for four and a half minutes. Despite such insignificant indicators, the anti-grav technology itself is possible, but due to its complexity and imperfections, Bringing LAAT repulsor technology to the real world is at best only a few decades away. Next, let's talk about the firepower of the LAAT. In the Star Wars universe, these gunships are armed to the teeth with blaster cannons and missile launchers. While we don't have energy-based blasters like in Star Wars, we do have projectile weapons and guided missiles in the real world. These weapons are based on the principles of chemistry, physics, and engineering. 
and they can certainly pack a punch. The LA-80 gunship in the Star Wars universe is equipped with a variety of weapons designed for different combat scenarios. Let's take a closer look at some of the principles of operation of these weapons and compare them with real-world examples. In Star Wars, the LA-80 is armed with blaster cannons, which are energy-based weapons that fire bolts of plasma or energy at high velocities. These blaster bolts are incredibly destructive and can be adjusted for power and rate of fire. But for earthly science, plasma weapons, which is what a blaster is, are in principle impossible today. While we have energy-based weapons like lasers, they are generally used for cutting or marking, and very rarely as traditional weapons. For example, the US Navy destroyer Preble received the Helios Complex into service in 2022. It is used as a traditional weapon for physical destruction of vulnerable targets, such as unarmored boats, drones. The LA-80 also has laser weapons directly, two to four laser turrets that provide the gunship with a 360-degree field of fire. These turrets are primarily used for anti-personnel and anti-vehicle roles. Real-world military vehicles often feature machine guns and anti-aircraft cannons for close-range defense. But the concept of laser turrets for personal-scale combat is not something we have developed. By the way, the LAAT laser itself in the universe looks quite plausible, with one exception, their color, or rather the ability to see it. Whereas in reality a laser can only be seen in space with particles from which the laser light will be reflected, be it smoke, fog, etc. Also the LAAT is equipped with missile launchers that can fire guided projectiles at enemy targets. These missiles can lock onto enemy vehicles and deliver precise firepower. The LOTS missile launchers are somewhat analogous to guided missile systems used in modern military vehicles and aircraft. We have a wide range of guided missiles for anti-aircraft, anti-ship, and ground attack roles, but they are not as agile or versatile as those depicted in Star Wars. As a result, in terms of realism on our planet, the LOTS weapons system presents several challenges and departures from real-world capabilities. In conclusion, the LAAT gunship's weaponry in the Star Wars universe represents a fascinating fusion of science fiction and technology. While some principles of operation have real-world analogs, the extent of their capabilities, the reliance on energy-based weapons, and the versatility of the LOTS weaponry are beyond the reach of our current civilization. Now, let's address the most distinctive feature of the LAAT gunship, its ability to transport troops into combat zones quickly. In Star Wars, it can carry a platoon of clone troopers into battle with ease. Our current civilization certainly has the technology to transport troops via aircraft. Many modern landing helicopters can easily transport a platoon, and even more soldiers. So there is nothing unrealistic in the concept of a gunship for 30 people. As a result, we can say that LAAT has many fundamentally impossible aspects in its design for modern humanity which is why at this stage of development, this technique is fundamentally impossible for our civilization.